We woke up on the morning of June 15th to a perfect, beautiful, sunny day. It was warm, there was not a cloud in the sky, and we were so happy because the wedding was going to be outside and all of our pictures were going to be outside. So we were hoping that the weather would cooperate and we were very lucky. The night before we spent some time getting everything organized, my last minute bouquet of flowers was ready to go. We double checked that we had our rings and all of the things that we needed for wedding day. Even though we were putting effort into trying to do this the simplest way possible, it still felt like a lot of details and things to pull together. And I think that's why we were both kind of nervous. We had to spend some time during the earlier part of the day just relaxing and getting everything organized, but we were definitely nervous hoping that everything was going to go smoothly and according to plan. Patrick decided to wear the suit that he already had, but just his vest, no jacket, so he would be comfortable. I ended up getting a champagne floor length dress, and this might have been one of the most challenging parts of wedding planning. It took me months of searching to find a dress that I really liked. I wanted something that was not quite a traditional wedding dress, that had something different and special to it. And the dress that I found I absolutely loved. The detail and the sparkliness of it was just perfect. There was a champagne fabric with an overlay covered in sparkles. There were white and gold making an art deco design coming down the skirt with this beautiful lace scalloping at the bottom. It was a little bit long, but I did not want to have it hemmed because I would lose that design. Just outside our window, you could see St. Catherine's Church. And this is a landmark in Spring Lake. Throughout the day, you can hear the church bells. And I thought it was neat that as I was getting ready, I could hear the church bells off in the distance. Most of the day was spent with getting ready, at least for me it was. I was doing my own hair and makeup, so it took quite a bit of time, especially because my hair is very long. Being able to get through all of those curls and get my hair just the way that I wanted it to go with the dress. I also did some last minute alterations to the dress. I did most of the alterations myself because I wanted it to fit a certain way. After I was done with my hair, it was time for a cookie break. And then it was time for Patrick to come and start to get ready as well. So there's a few things that we were doing today that are not exactly traditional. It's a little different when you elope. And part of that was that we were both getting ready in the same room. And this was actually one of my favorite parts of the whole day. We were just kind of doing our normal thing, like we usually get ready to go out if we're doing something special. So Patrick helped me get some of the flowers into my hair. I helped him straighten the collar on his shirt. So it was just a, a neat process of us getting ready. And although it felt like we had all day to do these things, four o'clock was coming up very quickly. And at the last little bit, it felt like a rush to grab everything and make sure that we made it to the gazebo on time. We gathered all of our stuff and rushed over to Potter Park, over to the gazebo. And as we got there, the rest of our family was arriving. So that was one of the main things we were nervous. Everything was happening on time and everybody was there when they were supposed to be.
when we got to the gazebo and looked at the location where we were doing the ceremony, we knew that we had made the right choice for us. It was just perfect. <laughs> no pictures yet. As everyone arrived and got settled, Patrick and I worked on setting up our cameras and our tripods. Since we decided to do the photography and the video for the wedding ourselves, we had to set up our equipment and I'm kind of glad that we made this decision. It gave us something to focus on and keep us busy. We ready? Ready! <laughs> <laughs> Dearly beloved, today you celebrate one of life's greatest moments and give recognition to the worth and beauty of love as you join together in vows of marriage. Patrick and Laura, the covenant which you are about to make with each other is meant to be a beautiful and sacred expression of your love for each other. As you pledge your vows to each other and as you commit your lives to each other, we ask that you do so in all seriousness and yet with a deep sense of joy, with deep conviction that you are committing yourselves to a dynamic, growing relationship of trust, mutual support, and caring love. So with this in mind, I now ask you, do you, Patrick, take Laura to be your wife, to love her, comfort and keep her, and forsaking all others, remain true to her for as long as you both shall live? I do. And do you, Laura, take Patrick to be your husband, to love him, comfort and keep him, and forsaking all others, remain true to him for as long as you both shall live? I do. Now that you've declared your intentions, I invite you to share your vows with one another. You want to hand your bouquet over or I can set them on the bench? Why don't you guys hold hands? Patrick, repeat to Laura after me these words. I, Patrick, take you, Laura. I, Patrick, take you, Laura. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. To this day forward. For better, for worse. For better or worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And Laura, repeat to Patrick after me these words. I, Laura, take you, Patrick. I, Laura, take you, Patrick. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. Health, to love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. As a symbol of your love and commitment, you will exchange rings. These rings have no beginning and no end. They set forth the eternal nature of real love. They will represent the love and trust that you promised to each other this day. So Patrick, I don't know if you could open it for me. Take that ring. And place it on Laura's finger, and as you do, repeat to her after me these words. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As I give you myself. As I give you myself. With love and affection. With love and affection. Wear it in peace always. Wear it in peace always. There you go. <laughs> go ahead and place that on Patrick's finger, and as you do, repeat to him after me these words. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As I give you myself. As I give you myself. With love and affection. With love and affection. Wear it in peace always. Wear it in peace always. And you guys can hold hands if you like. As you begin your life as a married couple, I would like to share with you the beautiful and wise words from the wedding reading. Love isn't always perfect. It isn't a fairy tale or a storybook, and it doesn't always come easy. Love is overcoming obstacles, facing challenges, fighting to be together, holding on and never letting go. It is a short word, easy to spell, difficult to define, and impossible to live without. Love is work, but most of all, love is realizing that every hour, every minute, and every second was worth it because you did it together. 
Laura and Patrick, may you find happiness in your matrimony. May you live faithfully together. May you ever remain compassionate. May your years be rich in the joys of life and your days be long upon the earth. And as much as you, Laura, and you, Patrick, have promised your love for each other by these vows, the joining of hands, and the giving of rings, by virtue of the authority vested in me as an officiant and the laws of this state, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. And I get out of that so I'm not photobombing. Did you get the kiss? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> I hear photographers say, hold it for the count of five. <laughs> and here, let me give you your bouquet back so you can get some pictures with that. I'm going to put your ring box here. Here you go. Now some pictures together with that. <laughs> Our wedding official, Andrea, was a lot of fun to work with and she made this whole process of planning the ceremony very easy. We got some pictures in the gazebo and the nice thing is that everybody has phones with cameras on it now so we got lots of different pictures. After we got all the different shots that we wanted by the gazebo, we packed up our stuff and headed just across the street to the park where the actual lake is because we wanted to go over to the bridal bridge. This is where everyone takes pictures for their wedding. And Patrick brought his drone, so he was going to try to get some drone shots <laughs> and just show how beautiful this whole area is. Spring Lake is such a unique town, especially for its location at the Jersey Shore. It doesn't have any traffic lights and the parking by the beach doesn't have any parking meters, which is very unusual. There is a boardwalk along the beach, but it's a non-commercial boardwalk, so the feeling of this town is much more relaxed and slower paced than a lot of other towns at the Jersey Shore. Once we had fulfilled our need for all sorts of different pictures and videos, we made our way off of the bridge and headed back to the cars because our next stop was the restaurant. We had reservations at the Breakers, which is a restaurant right on the ocean front. So we were looking forward to a good meal and some good views. One of the reasons we were happy that we picked Spring Lake as the location for our wedding was because everything is very close together. We were able to drive from our hotel to Potter Park 
and from Potter Park to the Breakers restaurant in just a couple of minutes. It's really just a few blocks this way or a few blocks that way. And we picked this particular date, even though it was very last minute, because we were trying to get in right before the high season started. As soon as school gets out for the year, the high season at the shore starts. So you can see there were quite a few open parking spots and that's very unusual for a shore town in July. We also picked Wednesday as the day that we would get married because the shore can get very busy on the weekends. So we thought middle of the week gives us the best chance for less traffic, easier parking, and an easier time getting dinner reservations. We ended up going to the Breakers because we wanted to be oceanfront and they have a lounge. So we figured whenever we got done with the pictures, we could head on over and relax until our table was ready. <laughs> There's a red light. Is there? Yeah. So you know. The Breakers has a lot of different seafood options. I got penne and vodka with crab meat and Patrick got angel hair with scallops, which was great. Outside the windows behind us, there's actually a great view of the ocean. It was hard to get on video because the lighting in the background was so bright, but that's the ocean over there. After a great dinner that served as a very easy wedding reception, we said goodbye to everybody as they headed back to the hotels. But Patrick and I decided that we weren't ready to go back to the hotel just yet. We took a walk down to the beach. We just needed a little time to soak in the moment and just appreciate the fact that we pulled it together, we made it happen, and we were officially married. Could not have asked for a better day or a better wedding location than Spring Lake. Tired. <laughs> Even as hard as we worked to try to keep things simple and stress-free, it was still quite an active day. Lots of things to get ready and make sure that we had all the details tied up and we were happy that everything went as smoothly as it possibly could, but we were definitely looking forward to getting things started for our honeymoon road trip and having a few days to just travel and explore new areas together because that is our favorite thing to do. As we headed back to the hotel, we both agreed that the day went about as perfectly as it could have. It's amazing how everything came together, from finding the right official to do our ceremony, finding this town and this great hotel. The ceremony that we had was simple and special without being too long and we were able to put all of this together in a very short time frame to make it happen before the high season. So it was quite a lot that we felt like we had accomplished in this day. We headed back to the Hewitt Wellington to change into some more comfortable clothes and to hang out with Patrick's family and just soak in all of the great experiences of the day and get ready for the honeymoon which starts tomorrow. Well you worried about you and me the injustice the next president to be the news and watch hear your career it's time for you to face those fears and it's all Don't be scared, just take a deep breath of air.
one, two, three to ten, you begin to focus again, and though time flies, we'll have enough to realize this bigger than the both of us.